I'm Marianne Esposito. Today at Tuscan Market, I'm making two focaccias with a lot of my friends. And that's all there is to it. I mean, cooking doesn't have to be complicated. Add the cream. So about a half a cup of heavy cream goes in here. You did a great job, Mary Ellen. With the base of the pan, it's a little rumba action. I think I've got a relatively right, clean, clean hand to work hand. with. I always say you have to keep that hand clean so you can answer the phone. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Ciao! <laughs> you did both no, so I well! I did. You I did know. really, really well. That was beautiful. I think you should keep that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Do you know what the word focaccia means? Do you know what the word focaccia means? It means hearth bread because a focaccia is a flat bread. It's flat as opposed to, you know, a yeasted, heavy looking, tall bread. So focaccia is probably one of the oldest breads that you can find in Italy and in other cultures too. And today we're going to make two types of focaccia. We're going to make a savory one and we're going to make a sweet one. And the first one we're going to do is something called focaccia barese. And focaccia barese comes from Puglia in the south of Italy. So it's a very unusual focaccia because it's not made in a rectangular pan like most focaccia would be made. Instead, the focaccia barese is a round focaccia. So if you're gonna try this at home, you're gonna use round pans or you can use, if you don't have it, just make it in a rectangular rectangular pan and nobody is going to know the difference. So how do we start by doing this? You want to start with potatoes. So here I have cooked down some potatoes. These are Yukon Gold potatoes. I like to use Yukon Gold. I really uh, like the uh, texture of the Yukon Gold and the color. So we just diced up the potatoes and we covered them with at least three to three and a half cups of water. And why is that important? Because I need that water in order to get my yeast activated. So this is two potatoes, two medium potatoes, diced up. You want to have about two cups of mashed potatoes out of the potatoes that you cooked, and you want to reserve that cooking water. So now that you know that, I'm just going to put that aside. So we have our potatoes. Here they are, mashed up, See? all ready to go. And here is our water. So this is the three cups of water that I reserved from the potatoes. And why did I do that? Because potato water has a lot of starch in it. And yeast just loves to feed on starch. So we're going to use about one teaspoon of dry yeast. So this is dry yeast. Have you all worked with yeast before? Yeah. So in the old days, of course, you would work with cake yeast, which is fresh yeast. And it, I love to work with fresh yeast, but it's very hard to find for a lot of people. So this is a great substitute, so dried yeast. So we only need one teaspoon of yeast. So we're going to do this in a food processor. So we're going to put the yeast in there. We're going to put the three cups of water in with the yeast. And you want to make sure that the water is warm. You don't want it to be hot but warm. So I would say about 110 degrees is about right. Or if you're, you make a lot of dough, just use your finger, you'll know, okay? So I'm gonna let that yeast just get going while I talk to you about the flowers for this, because this is important. So this focaccia uses just a regular uh, flour, what in Italy would be called a, a double zero flour, zero zero. You'll see it on a bag. It'll say Italian flour, zero, zero. That's comparable to our all-purpose flour. But in addition to the all-purpose flour, we're also going to use this. This is semolina flour. Now, I know that you know that semolina is used for making pasta, right? Semolina and water is used for making all kinds of dried pastas, like a rigatoni, fettuccine, those types. This is what this is semolina flour. And this is semolina flour. What's the difference? Well, first of all, look at that color. This is deep, deep yellow. And it's grainy, very grainy. This is this flour, but re-milled. 
a second time. So now it's extremely silky. So if you make this recipe, you want to make sure you're using Durham semolina. Now, you can find it in a grocery store. I usually buy it online. And this one, of course, is coming from Sicily, and it tells you that it's been remilled. Rimashinata means to be remilled. So I've got five cups of the unbleached all-purpose, and I've got one cup of the Durham semolina. So you know now not to use this. Then, of course, we need salt. But here's the thing about salt. Salt will slow down the work of the yeast. So you don't want to put that in right away with the flour. I know a lot of people do this, but really you should really put it in with the last addition of flour. So that was about two cups of the mashed Yukon Gold. Now I don't know how much flour this is going to take. It's all going to depend on what this liquid will absorb. So making a bread or any other kind of dough, it's really in the hands. You'll, you'll know if it's right. So now we'll let that go and mix that up gently. So I'm going to start by adding three cups of this flour. Again, I, I'm just giving you an approximation. I'm saying five cups, but I don't know. We'll just have to see. Five. And a little extra. OK. Well, now we want to add, with this, the salt. I told you to add the salt at the end, so one and a half teaspoons. You need salt in the recipe, of course, but don't put it in at the very beginning. All right, so now we let this go. And now we're just going to cover this. Cover this, and you let this rise, oh, till it's double in size, about 40, 45 minutes or so, and then you'll be able to go. And we're always using extra virgin olive oil unless we are deep frying, because that would be just too heavy. So now you want to brush your pan well along the rim, okay, like that. And then you just take this and dump. I'm trying to make it easy for you. Okay. So then you just kind of play with it. Wet your hands and press it out. You don't want to take all those air bubbles out of there. It eventually will find its home, but you just want to spread it out. So now we just want to, you know, randomly put these cherry tomatoes in. The beauty of this is you're using simple ingredients. And, you know, at this time of the year, when I make this, of course, I, I use the uh, tomatoes that are coming out of my garden. So, um, yeah, so this would be the time of the year to make this. If you didn't have access to fresh tomatoes, you could use canned tomatoes for this. I've seen people do that, too. Okay, so now we have uh, our tomatoes. And then we need the olive, which are here. And you can buy the Castelvetrano either with the pit in them, but I'm too lazy for that. So you, but you can also get them pitted, whole pitted. So that's, that's what I would suggest. And you can find these in the grocery store, or you can find them uh, online somewhere. So you put in your olives. If you didn't like green olives, you could use something else, but it wouldn't be as authentic. I'm trying to stick to tradition because traditions are dying, right? So I'm all about sticking to tradition. So you add, they're starting to look like the Italian flag, right? <laughs> okay. Now this, this is something that's going to serve a lot of people. So if, you're having a, if you were having a large gathering, this would be a good thing to do. All right, then we have, of course, we have to give this a little salt. Not too much, because we have salt with the olives, right? So we're just going to give that a sprinkling of salt. And here is the oregano. Some people will add pecorino cheese to this, sheep's milk cheese. So then a little a dousing here of some extra virgin olive oil. OK, so then you uh, cover that. Your oven is on at 425. 
and in 20 minutes or so, you're ready to bake this. Ooh. Cherries for focaccio di marostica. Looks beautiful. Doesn't it look beautiful? Okay, so helping me today is Erica Hemingway, related to you know who, Ernest. So Erica, do you like to work with doughs? I will learn to like to work with doughs. <laughs> okay. All right, so the first thing we have to do, because for this focaccia, unlike the last one, we have to make a sweet topping. So we're using cherries. So you can use Bing cherries like this, or you could use frozen whole cherries. You can buy them, you know, frozen oh. pitted. Otherwise, when you get home, you gotta take all those cherries and you gotta put them in here and go. Oh, I like that little snapper. And that's gonna take all day. So we're trying to make this easy. So here we have two pounds wow. of pitted cherries. And we're gonna add two thirds of a cup of sugar, just like that. And then a little lemon juice about a tablespoon of lemon juice. And I'm gonna have you stir that around. Okay, I would love to. You stir that around. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of lemon zest. That's the zest of one lemon. Now, what we need to do with this now is cook this down because it has to be thick in order to put over the top of the focaccia. So you wanna do this part first so it cools down enough that then, you know, when you're working with the dough, it's ready to go. All right, so now you've got to cook that. So why don't okay. you put that on the back stove and over medium heat, you want to let that cook. It's going to take about 20, 25 minutes, depending on the cherries you have, until it's thick. So while that's happening, we are going to make another focaccia. Now remember, the last one was savory, right? Because it had the oregano, tomatoes, and the olives. This one, actually this dough, this focaccia comes from the Veneto, from a town called Marostica. I love Marostica. saying Marostica. Marostica in the Veneto. So you have to start with a half a cup of warm water. Okay. And we need some warm milk. Warm milk. Half a cup each. Okay. Warm milk and warm water. So now we need yeast. Yeast, okay. So here you go. So this is for you because we're gonna let you do this. So for this, we're gonna need a teaspoon of yeast. Okay. One teaspoon of dried yeast, you sprinkle that in there. And you wanna make sure that the water and the uh, milk, milk is warm, not hot. Because if it's hot, you're gonna kill the yeast. Okay? Oh, I can already see it's starting to... Yeah, starting to bubble up a little bit. This is a science experiment right here. This is a science <laughs> experiment. So then with it, we're going to need an egg, one whole egg. Oh, and I can smell it too. Good, Erica. Yes. This is good. Okay. <laughs> and we need sugar. Okay. Put the sugar in. Put the sugar in. Okay. Because yeast just loves to feed on that. So now we need a spoon to mix that. Mix that around. All right. Get that all mixed in. It's my workout for the day here. This, this, <laughs> is, this is a real easy, nice dough to, if you're not familiar with those, this is a good one to do. Okay. Then you need your egg. My egg. All right. Pour yep. this on top. Right. Looks beautiful. And then whisk it in with this. Oh, give me that. New tool. Yeah, new tool. <laughs> whisk that in with that. Okay. Yeah, get that all blended well. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna put in the zest of one orange. All right, so we have orange zest and lemon zest going in this Yeah, because dish. you know, the orange with cherries is really nice. You know, it's, it's just a nice flavored dough. Now this is getting even more fragrant smell yeah. here. It's really... now, but you're not done. Oh, now not done. you need butter. Okay. So here we have four tablespoons of softened butter. Whisk that all in. Keep whisking. Keep whisking. Here we have about four cups of unbleached all-purpose flour. Okay. So now this is where... This is the hardest part of cooking right here. Yeah, okay. You did it much faster than me. Yeah, all right, now keep it in the bowl. So, all right, so now, uh, scrape off this. Okay. okay. Thank you. I wanna make sure that that's all in there. Okay. <laughs> All right, see? That butter could have been a little softer, but don't worry. This is going to be a great dough. Okay, great. All right, so now start adding the flour. Start adding the flour. Remember okay. what I told you. Yep, we'll keep okay. going. Okay. When do we add the salt? 
We don't add the salt until later after it's partially mixed in. And Be why is that? Because of the yeast is going to make it harder with the salt, right? I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Stop. Stop. Okay. Now, okay, you can use the spoon, but once you get, keep going. Okay. And then you're eventually going to have to put your hands in there. Okay. Well, good okay. thing I washed them. Yes. I'm ready to yeah, go. Yeah, right, right. So get that all mixed in. Oh, so you wow. have never worked with yeast before? Um, you know, cooking with my family at, at my kitchen, my mom was always the baker because she was like the math and science person, yeah. so she had to make sure it was always very specific to what we did. Okay. And um, so she would, we would bake cookies and stuff for Christmas, mm -hmm. and it's just been a while. <laughs> all right, all right, so now it's starting to get thick. I'm put the salt in. Ooh, okay. okay. Uh, oh yeah, now it's getting hard on okay. the spoon okay. here. Okay, now it's getting hard on the spoon, which means. Tell me when I need to use my hands. Yeah, it's coming up. Um, okay, so I would say just a little bit more. And so then yes. we're gonna take that out on the board. Okay. I like watching you better than doing it, I think. <laughs> You're not going to get away that easy. Yeah. Of course not. Okay. So now, now, still a little tacky. Okay. We didn't use all the four cups, but we may. All right, keep going. Okay, so now I'm going to okay. use this. You can use a bench knife, yeah. Oh, I've never used one of these all before. Right, turn up, yeah, around. Okay. Good, keep going. Okay. Yeah. Get all this stuff off of it. Mix white. How's it feeling? It feels good. It feels okay. better than it did a minute ago. Okay, now we're going to add the rest. This is the f total four cups. Okay, keep going. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now That's it's super, feeling good, Yeah, right? it is, for sure. Okay. Now what you want to do is knead that. Knead this, okay. Yes, until you don't see any more flour. Oh, and it my doesn't goodness. look so messy. Yeah, so yeah. well, that's, yeah. Rest of the flour, okay. I think, all right, so all right. four cups of flour. Okay, now it's all stuck together. Okay. There we go. Oopsie. Whoops. Okay, we've got to keep it on the board. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so now I'm going to have to come in with the cleanup crew after this. <laughs> okay, so now it's just exactly where we want it because you see how it's starting to hold together? Yes. I mean, you really are a pro. You can so tell that you know what you're doing. Once it's like that. Yep. You know it's good. You don't have to do anything else. Really? So, so that's good. So now we move this off. We're gonna put it right here and get the one that's already ready wow. for us. So here is our that same dough ready to go. Okay. Erica, now we have to dust our pin with a little flour. Okay. And we've got to flatten this out because remember the other focaccia we did was round, remember? Yes. But this one is gonna be rectangular. Oh, so okay. So we wanna get it to fit this oh. pan. So we have to make that small get to this size. Yeah, oh boy. yeah. so I'm going to let you roll. And you see, it's such a nice dough that it's not sticking to our rolling pin. So we know we don't want to add any more flour, but we do have to get it much it's, flatter. It's stretchy. So work on that okay. while I talk to you about the pan oh, for this. This is a really cool roller. Yeah. So we're going to do this on a rectangular pan okay. like this. And I usually use parchment paper. See? Okay. So what I do is I put a little bit of water on the pan. Yep. Like that. And then I stick the parchment paper on it. So now it's not going to go anywhere, okay? It's going to stay there. So sometimes, you know, if you're doing um, any kind of baking, like cookies and stuff, you're trying to put it on the parchment paper, it's slipping everywhere, put a little water underneath. You're okay. doing well. And you see, as long as you continue doing that, yeah, I can see it's it. stretching. I'm putting up my weed on it. <laughs> yeah. Now, the nice thing about this is this is a, a dessert focaccia, really. Ooh. I mean, you could eat it anytime breakfast. It would be nice for breakfast as well. But isn't it rolling out beautifully? Yeah, it's beautiful. It, it's so easy to do. And I love that you can see the little orange zest in there. You can see the orange zest, which mm -hmm. gives it a really nice flavor. Yep. So you could use this as a breakfast focaccia. This could be a dessert focaccia with a nice wine. And I think Ooh. later we're going to serve it with a nice wine. Okay. And you'll know that the dough is right, that it's risen long enough when it doesn't start to slap back at you, like you're oh, trying nervous. to roll it and it's coming back and it won't go anywhere. All right, Miriam, what's that the trick to flip this? The trick to flipping this? Yeah. Flip. Oh. See? Just, Just like, like that. that. Okay, yeah. Okay. All right, so keep going. Keep going, all right. Yeah. All right, so... Yeah, keep, so it's even, yeah, okay. So it's even. You know, so it's even thickness. Even thickness, okay. okay. And that's looking pretty good. Okay. So now you can finish forming it finish on this pan. Okay. All right, so you want to lift it up. Yeah. Kind of, kind of stretch it a little bit. Bring the pan over. Ready? Yeah. There we go. Flop. 
Okay, now you want to spread that out in the pan. Okay. Spread that out in the pan nicely. It Make doesn't have to be all the way to the edge, but you see by, by putting the water underneath that, the, the paper stayed where it should be, right? Ah, yes. Okay. Versus it getting all stuck. Now out. comes the fun part. The fun part. Which is, you know those cherries that we were cooking? Ooh. There they are. Okay. So, so now we need to spread these cherries. So here's a spoon for you. All right, beautiful, thank you. And you take these cherries and you just go over the top. Wow, look at how beautiful those look now. I'm telling you, this is absolutely delicious. This I mean, I would eat this without being cooked. This looks awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you could do that, I suppose, but. Wouldn't recommend it. So you want to, want to put a thick, Okay. Thick layer. We go all the way to the edge? You don't have to, but okay. just, you know, you want to cover, mainly cover. Just, you don't want to go all the way to the edge because it's going to bubble up a little bit, you know, okay. so the juices from the cherries are going to go everywhere. So, so I would never think to make a sweet focaccia bread. Well, yeah, this, this is called focaccia marostica. It's a, it's a type of, of a focaccia that they do in the Veneto, in this town called Marostica, and I was there several years ago. And it, it, they're very famous for their cherries. Their cherries are a DOP, so meaning that the cherries have to come from that specific locale, it has to be a specific type of cherry. And every year they have a festival. And for the festival, they serve the focaccia Marostica. But they make it in a cake, they take this dough and they make it in a round cake and then all the cherries you gotta mash together. Oh. I thought, no, that's a little messier. Let's do it this way. So this is the way I like to do it. But the other thing about Marostica that I love is that every two years in this town, they have what's called a living live chess game. Oh, so, so they use people? They use people, but they have two regular chess players who are up on a stage and they're playing the regular chess game and they're moving, you know. So they actually use like real <clears throat> bishops? Yeah, they're playing the regular on a board. But while they're making their move, the real people standing on the big chess board in the middle of the piazza make their move. So if the knight moves on the board, the knight on the horse here, he moves on the pavement. Oh, how cool is that? It is the coolest thing, but leave it to the Italians, right? <laughs> Only the Italians would think of these things. So and I love all your stories that come with cooking. It's not just yeah. making the food, it's the backstory. And like yeah. the olives with the focaccia we did earlier, or the now the cherries from the region. Right. I think that's amazing. Okay, so now we have, that's plenty, we okay. filled in all the holes. And now we just add, we can add some of these now and then we're gonna add some later. Okay. When we do the, uh, the topping with the when we do the glaze. So we put a few here. Put okay, a few great. On. Your oven is on at 425. This is going to bake for about 25, 30 minutes when you see that it's nicely browned on the edges. It's done. Then you want to take it out and that's when we're going to put the glaze on. So when you want to put it in the oven? I would love to. Okay. Oven's right. preheated. Okay. And we go. So there you have it. Thank you, Marianne. Focaccia, two ways. So, Erica, look what we did today. No, it two looks kinds of focaccia. And I want to thank all the students that are here today that also learned how to make this. We started with the focaccia barese, remember from body? And that had the olives and the tomatoes and the oregano. We made the dough with what in the dough? We made it with yeast and salt, and we did the tomatoes and the olives. It's beautiful. And the potatoes. Don't and the potatoes, the potatoes, right, the number the one. All right, so that's all perfect with a glass of red wine, nice mm. and warm, delicious. And then we took it to a new level, and we made this focaccia, the focaccia from Marostica, which has a beautiful cherry topping to it. The dough was a little different. Much we added different. eggs and sugar and orange zest. And lemon. Yes, and we topped it with the cherries and a little glaze and some almonds. Erica, class, thanks for being here. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. And I'm Erica Hemingway. Ciao. Ciao.